I want you to put your hands together for Dr. Bill Winston. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah, amen. <laughs> Father, we thank you so much for the word. Thank you, Lord, for this meeting. Thank you for the Copelands, Lord. They have blessed so many of us. Lord, thank you for the utterance you placed in my mouth. I pray that I speak your word with excellence, accuracy, and boldness, asking you to think through my mind, speak through my lips. The word of God will come forth unhindered, unchecked by any outside force. Now, Lord, we thank you for it, for signs, wonders, and miracles. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Shout amen. amen. Take your seats, take your seats, take your seats. <laughs> All right, now, I'm going to flow. I want to say, uh, we, love you, we love you too. Praise God. Amen. You know, uh, again, it's a miracle that I'm here. And uh, God is so good and gracious, and I thank you for receiving me. Uh, I'm walking by faith and not by sight. Praise God. Amen. All right. Well, I want to kind of lift up, uh, start up where I left off last night. And uh, at the same time, I want to um, start, man. What y'all got up here? Oh. Uh, hey, is that a fly? Y'all shout him out of here. Yeah. 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 Plead the blood. Oh, here. <laughs> hey, Amen. Well, my wife sends a big hello and thank you so much for again receiving me. Amen. Um, let's start out where we left off last night and, and then go a little bit into uh, the vengeance of the Lord. Um, so uh, we talked about word power and the power of your words. Um, <clears throat> this is interesting. Uh, let me give you a little bit more background on the kingdom because that's one of my specialties. Um, <clears throat> uh, Jesus came, Matthew chapter, uh, Mark chapter 1, verse 14, 15. He came preaching the kingdom of God. Uh, this is not a religious message. The kingdom is a government. And it had nothing to do with religion. <laughs> uh, this kingdom is something that the uh, book of Psalms talks about <clears throat> his kingdom rules over all. And uh, in church, uh, in the church, a lot of times we've lost the revelation of what Jesus preached. Um, for him to see signs and wonders and, and, and miracles, he said to the disciples, you know, go out and preach this and and, and, and work signs and wonders and tell them that the kingdom of God has come nigh to you. 
You know, I ain't saying nothing about religion. There's, there's plenty of religion here when Jesus got here. <clears throat> so in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20, uh, in the Amplified Translation. Uh, we're going to put that up and let, you, and let you read that particular scripture and see what it, see what it says. Ready? Read. And I want you to see that's homeland. That's commonwealth. Wow. Now, again, <clears throat> this is more political than it is anything, um, especially religious. And so when Jesus preached this, <clears throat> Um, he wanted people to see what the kingdom is like. Yes, he kept saying the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. The kingdom of God is like a this or like that. And if you look at it, the kingdom, um, he was inviting people to receive the kingdom. And not only the kingdom be in us, uh, Luke 17, verse 20, 21, but we be in the kingdom. Yes, sir. Now, the kingdom that he was talking about is invisible. But in the book of Revelation, you see uh, it come down out of heaven. And that's when you will actually see it tangibly. But this kingdom that he preached about was a government that was existing in the invisible realm. And so uh, I want you to think about it like this. It's your homeland. And you think about it in terms of its ability to supply everything you need independent of the environment that you're in. Now that, that's big. Um, when they needed um, food, uh, Jesus took two fish, five loaves, and he lifted them up and bless them. And then a miracle started taking place. Yes, he started feeding everybody. Yes. Now, again, this kingdom is to supply all your need. Yes. Because there's more than enough in the kingdom for you as long as Jesus tarries. Yes, sir. Yes. So you got more than enough. More than enough what? You got more than enough joy. Yes. It doesn't come from here. It comes from the kingdom. It comes from the invisible source that God has made available to his citizens. So I remember like I told one time, I went down to Haiti, my first trip, and um, I saw this beautiful white building in the middle of Port-au-Prince. It looked like everything around it was poor, and, and this was very rich, obviously. Uh, it stood out. And I said, Lord, what is that? He said, that's the U.S. I asked somebody, what is that? And they said, that's the U.S. Embassy. I said, wow. So, I noticed that a wrought iron fence around it had guards and so forth and so on. Now, this embassy and whoever was in it from the U.S. did not uh, 
have to rely on Haiti to feed them. If something happened to them and they had medical care or medical needs, they didn't have to rely on the local doctors. They just fly a physician in from the U.S. Um, there were guards around it because when that embassy is in that country, all the ground around that embassy belongs to the country it came from. So somebody just can't go on the ground. Uh, so I look at that and I look at the fact that when it was time for healing, Jesus healed them all. Yes, sir. Are you with me? Yes. And it's like he got healing from another place. And I'm trying to get you to get a vision of this kingdom. You don't have to rely on solutions of this world. Because the kingdom has solutions that are waiting to be applied to this world. And whenever you go into a place, uh, that place can be a part of the kingdom jurisdiction. Let me give you a case in point. So I was at uh, this place uh, when our first, our first location, maybe you can put it up, uh, at Lake and Pulaski. And so a lady broke in the door. She said, where's the, who's the pastor in here? I said, I'm the pastor. She said, want, you know, you want to see me? I said, you see me now, lady. She said, well, <laughs> I want to know what you're going to do about the drug dealers that's in the block. Now, I'm going to tell you this last night, but I'm going to tell you again. And uh, I said, get in this circle and pray. So we prayed because the solution came from the kingdom. It's an invisible source that God has made it so that it has everything in it that you'll need for your success in this earth. Yes, sir. I mean, you can, so anyway, we prayed and God said, take this oil, bless it and give it to her and tell her to pour it down the middle of the street. And I did that. Now it's interesting what got rid of the drug dealers was a word. I blessed it and told her to pour it down the street. So it was blessed oil. Yes, and I claimed it for kingdom jurisdiction. Yes, so no longer did it belong to the devil. It now is kingdom jurisdiction. And the drug dealers had to leave. And they left the next morning and never came back. Now, <laughs> words again is what I used. And when we get in this kingdom, words have the all, all power. They have the name of Jesus or whatever. These words that you can speak have all this power that heaven backs to make sure that your words don't fall to the ground. Yes, sir. You got what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Now, this is really uh, something that needs to be preached because we don't have, uh, many times don't have knowledge of this and we don't have knowledge of it, you can't use it. But he, God, Lord have mercy. Can I, can I just come forth with it? <clears throat> God 
can move. Lord have mercy. God can use you to rearrange the earth. He, he can move a factory from overseas right into that community that needs jobs. Instead of making them migratory and having to go somewhere else to get a job, why not move a factory right here? There's so much about that kingdom that needs to be taught because when you've got that kingdom and operating in that kingdom, there is no lack, there is no loss, there is no failure, there is no uh, anything that is talking about success and victory, uh, that, kingdom of, that kingdom of God supplies for them. So his kingdom rules over all. Say amen to that. Amen. <clears throat> I just want to say that because I didn't talk about that here. I assume every time I go somewhere that people understand the kingdom, that that's, that's the only thing Jesus preached. He didn't preach a lot of other stuff. He preached the kingdom. And uh, everything was in that kingdom. Your, 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 your jobs, or everything, you can make that happen uh, with the kingdom. All right, let me take up where I left off last night. Now, um, Last night I talked on uh, word power. Um, <clears throat> and I left off, well, let me see what I covered. Um, I first said that in the beginning was a word, the words with God, words with God. The same was in the beginning with God. The, uh, uh, all things were made by him, without him, was not anything that was made, was made. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. So let's look at the word. The word <clears throat> is creative, number one. The word is a seed, number two. Mm -hmm. The word is light, number three. The word and light includes Wisdom, number three. Uh, the word is God's divine nature, number two, number, th number five, whatever it is. <laughs> so uh, this word has all these properties in it. In the beginning was the word. So I like what Brother Copeland says. This word is self-contained. It doesn't need anything to bring itself to pass. Man, that's awesome. Yes, sir. That, that's awesome. So that's the word. Now, next, I said how the word influenced my life. I got saved by the word. Then I learned uh, how to get my car started by the word. Uh, then I learned how to prosper in my business by the word. Now, you see what I'm saying? And the Word is doing all of this. Now, one thing I talked about in the Word um, <clears throat> and this Word and the power of this Word, um, I want to tell you, yes. Naaman, you remember him, he had leprosy. And uh, the prophet gave him a word, go dip in this pool. And he started started out to go dip in the pool and, and the next thing you know um, he became clean. Now it wasn't the pool he wanted to dip in. He wanted to dip in somewhere else. Now also I said the word leaves no trace. That the word uh, and faithful words uh, uh, will undo anything that the devil has done and leave you with no trace that the devil ever did it. Now, if nothing else, take that home. Because anything will leave you with no trace that what the devil has done is worth you finding out about. Am I right about that? So we see one way Naaman had no trace that uh, 
that leprosy had come into his life. Or you can take the time Jesus healed the boy in Matthew chapter, uh, or John chapter nine, he came and healed this boy. And then the religious leaders came and started interrogating uh, the mother. And they said, is this your boy? And she said, yes. Uh, it, was he born blind? Yes. Now, that's where you stop. Because he had no evidence that he was born blind. I want you to see this now. This is how Jesus ministered. And then he said, the things that I do show you do also. Didn't he say that? So you can minister the same way. That should be in the church no trace of what you've been through. Come on. This is one of the reasons why you want to be in the church. Because I want all trace of guilt, of shame out of my life. I want all trace that once I had this or I had that or I went through this, I want it out of my life. Watch this one. I want all trace that I've been broke out of my life. You hear what I'm saying to you? And this is what God can do. Again, I said last night and I'll say it again. You have been born again into the richest family that's ever been known to mankind. Ooh, that's heavy. Y'all get that. You have been born again into the wealthiest family that's ever been known to mankind. You have been born, I'm telling you, I'm fixing to take advantage of it. Say amen. Now, I've been taking advantage of it a little bit, but I want to go all the way. See, I want to be so rich that my car will make people mad. I, I'm telling you, it's time for the church to stop blending. We don't, we, we don't need that anymore. We need you to stand out. You are in the kingdom. And the kingdom is in you. You ought to talk big, look big, smell big. It's time now for the church to, 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 to be a witness of where you came from. You didn't come from here. You were born again. This, this, this right on here, this came from Alabama. But this in here, it came from God. Man, I'm just thinking about, man, it's time for the church to be, uh, like they say, filthy rich. I don't know what that is, but, but I, really, why? So we can imitate God. We, we are imitating his image, what he's like. And boy, I'm telling you, it's just that way. I tell you, we, we should be in a place where we're rebuilding cities. Yeah. You know, see, and because and we're not there, they're taxing everybody. Where you, you, you come into place and you, you take care of it. Yeah. All right. Now, also, um, we did uh, one section. We talked about perfect man, and we talked about that. Let's put that scripture up there and read it one more time. This is in James chapter 3. And verse two, chapter one, uh, verse one talks about teachers and that let's read verse one first. Uh, James chapter three, verse one in the living Bible translation. Let's read that because that has a lot to do with something that you should know. All right. Uh, ready? Ready? Read.
Well, you see that. Oh, I want to be in church. I want to be up there teaching the people or whatever have you. Well, you're going to be judged more severely. Especially if you teach them something that's bad. Look at Numbers chapter 14. You see what happened. Them four, those 10 spies that came back and taught the people that they can't take it, they died early. So it's talking about if you want to be a teacher, get serious about it because you're going to be judged more severely. Let's go uh, next to chapter, uh, verse 2. All right? Uh, verse, uh, yeah, uh, 2. Uh, uh, ready? Read. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I don't want you to read. So he's, <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about being a perfect man. Yes, sir. That if you can hold your body in, in, in oh, you can speak right words and believe what you speak, these right words will help you hold your whole body in check. That's what one, put it up there in the NIV translation, please. Now I know it's taking kind of, you know, uh, I ain't, you know, because, yeah, I ain't able to. All right. Ready, read. Ready, read. My goodness. To keep your whole body in check, keep your weight down, keep your blood pressure normal, keep your sugar normal, keep everything normal if you know how to handle words. You see, he never did. I'm, I'm, thank God for our doctors. They are apostles of healing. All right? But I'm telling you, Jesus had those apostles and he was teaching them how to live above this world system. Yes, sir. That's what it was all about. So, um, dip your whole body in check now. You know, um, we want to do that because. Um, sometimes, you know, we let our bodies, um, you know, tell us what, you know, what to do and so forth. And next thing you know, I'm going to read the next place. Okay. <laughs> so you, you know what I'm talking about. You know, it's like that, that man, he went in that little shop, uh, to buy a little gift, you know, for somebody. And when he came in, this man had this parrot in, in, in the cage. <laughs> and, and the parrot <clears throat> saw this man come in and he started calling the man ugly names. He said, you ugly, you go and call the man ugly names. And, and a shopkeeper got embarrassed and ran over there and, and reached in the cage and slapped a parrot. <laughs> well, parrot jumped back. Parrot is mad. Now he's mad about what just happened. So the man got done shopping and, and finding his little gift. He paid for it and he was about to go out. And he looked at the parrot. The parrot looked at him. The parrot said, you know, <laughs> but uh, that's my little parrot story. So a lot of this, you know, hallelujah. So this is the perfect man. Then I, then I put, I uh, looked at, we looked at this whole idea of, of this um, God coming in and making uh, words work and, and what are words for and what, uh, use of words and so forth and so on. We did a lot of that. But now we're going down to how to put power or faith in your words to make them work. Now, this is important. All right, now, uh, we said three things. Uh, we said that confess, 
that in terms of uh, commit, and we said that you have to create. Now this, these are three things. Now, we're training the human spirit. And I, I told you about Jerry and Charles. Well, I didn't finish the story. Uh, they were at this meeting and Charles was supposed to speak after Jerry. And Jerry said, you know, how much time do I have? He said, one hour. How much time does Charles have? He has one hour. And so when they said that, he started speaking, but he said, I think I'll just take Charles' time too. Now, he started speaking and looked at his watch. He had plenty of time. He started, kept speaking, looked at his watch, plenty of time. He kept on speaking, and all of a sudden discovered his watch had stopped. <laughs> he said, what time is it? The moderator said, you have not only taken your time, but you've taken Charles's time too. Charles said, I just want to say one thing. Jerry has trained his spirit to bring to pass everything that he says. <laughs> now, there's a danger to that. Over in Genesis chapter 31 and verse th um, 30 and 31 and 32. Start at verse 30. And we're going to read that. Genesis chapter 31 and verse 30. All right? Okay. Ready? Read. Keep going. Keep going. Stop. Who stole the Laban's gods? Rachel. She stole them. But he has trained himself that what he says the spirit will bring to pass. Wow. Now, the, wait a minute. Now, this, this is terrible stuff here. He said something that the enemy put pressure on him to say. See, Laban was, was after his gods because he was using gods to keep them there. He was, he was a ubi man. And he was using these gods to keep them there. This is sorcery. He kept, for 20 years, kept Jacob broke. Jacob couldn't get ahead if he wanted to. And you can be in a system that Satan is controlling and you can't get ahead if you wanted to. And so what happened? Rachel died, you know, having given birth to, uh, to uh, Benjamin. So I'm saying sometimes, you know, there can be a downside to it if you're not careful of your speech. So when Jerry said that, he was jesting. But you can't jest with a trained spirit. Because it is trained to bring to pass what you say. It didn't know you were kidding. You follow what I'm saying? 
And many times it's because the enemy wants to, to you know, inflict his, his will on the people. So God is, you know, sometimes in your church or in your business, you're calling things like they are. We're, we're not getting the business that we want to get. Or my praise group is just not singing the right songs. Well, that's not what you say. Because your increase comes out of your lips. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the first thing he taught Abraham is to call things, come on, help me, that be not as they did work. Now, this changes your speech pattern because we're used to calling things that are as though they are. That's not the way you change them. You can't say, uh, uh, you know, what it looks like. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm telling you this now because that is for everybody up in here. Yes, sir. You, you got to stop looking at the TV and calling it what you see. That's not a believer's job. Your job is to change things. Words do the work. Let's look at Luke chapter 17 and uh, verse, uh, verse uh, 5. Well, let's start at verse 6. <clears throat> he said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you'd say to the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, be thou cast in the sea, and it should obey who? You. you. What should obey you? The tree? Your words? You see what I'm saying? Get a deeper revelation. Jesus was called, he was talking about words. He was talking about faith-filled words. And then the next verse, please. Next, verse 7. I want you to read that in your best voice. Ready, read. Stop. He, taught, he didn't change the subject. He's still talking about words. He's still talking about faith. Because faith supposed to be, words of faith supposed to be uh, accomplishing something. So which of you having a servant plow? Your servant are your words. And they have been given to you to carry out things on the earth. Yes, sir. Yeah. If you did everything with your hands, that's called toil. If you have to think of suggestions and struggle with it and come up with something, that's called toil. You're not supposed to toil at all. You're not supposed to toil at all when you need an answer. Uh, there's a way I'm going to show you that you get an answer. It's not to toil. Yep. That's mental anguish. You're trying to come up with solution. Oh, I'm wringing your hands. I just don't know what I'm going to do. I declare you are done toiling. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. No more toil. No more toil. Peter said, we have what? Toil all night. Where did toil come from? Look at Genesis. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Amplified, please. <clears throat> Where did toil come from? Because you're done toiling. Ready? Read. And sorrow and what? Toil. Toil. It's a curse. 
You're not supposed to toil for anything. It will eat up your life. It will make organs break down because you're not made to toil. This body is fearfully yet wonderfully made. It's more precious than gold. This thing don't, it's not made to toil, not made to worry. It's not made to, to, you know, get in situations and, oh Lord, what are we going to do now and so forth? Not, not, not so. Not so. The Holy Ghost with your spirit will do all the thinking for you. It's called grace. And grace knowledge is what you're supposed to be functioning in. I remember when I had fasted, I was fasting more, I'm telling you. I I was getting, you know, trying, I knew God was calling me and I'm trying to act right. And so I I was fasting and then one week and I'd fast another. And then I said, no, I ain't got an answer yet. I'm gonna fast. See, that was works. And my bishop saw me at that time. He said, Bill, it's by grace and grace alone. Boy, that checked me because I was trying to work for it. And the works are over. All the works have been done. Hebrews chapter four, verse one, two, and three. They have been done, finished from the beginning. God knew everything you're going to come in contact with, everything that you're going to need, everything that you're going to have to think of. He knew all of it and put it up in the spirit. Say amen. Amen. Say the works works are finished. finished. Yeah, all right. (laughs) All right, so notice... In Luke 17, he said, what if you have a servant plowing? And once he finished plowing, don't let him come in and look at TV. You take that servant and put him back out there. Faith is never supposed to rest. Never. You start resting that faith, you'll put yourself in a place that you don't have to use no faith, and that's the most dangerous thing, like Brother Copeland says, the way you can live as a believer. The world can live that way because they don't have no faith anyway, but you can't afford to. Faith is supposed to always be working, and your words are to accomplish something, not just to complain. I went to God one night. This is the early part of my ministry. I said, Lord, I said, listen, this is Saturday night now. I need a message for Sunday. Oh, Lord, the people, the people need a, they need a word, Lord. Oh, Lord, help me. He said, what are you doing? I heard it just as clear. I said, I'm trying to get a word. <laughs> He said, is that the way you come before me? I said, no, sir. I, I knew I was in trouble. I, he said, how, how do you come before me? I said, you said come boldly. He said, why don't you try that? I said, well, give me that word then. I need that word. That, that word came in seconds. The desire of the righteous shall be granted. And the righteous are as bold as a lion. Come on. See, what we're trying to do is make God come down. There are people like that. Try to make you come down. It's a dangerous place to be. You look at me. It's a dangerous place to be. You don't come down. When you up there with me taking 10 cities and, and uh, emptying out prisons, get, get, getting prisoners, so forth and so forth, you, you can't afford to come down. Yes, sir. It'll cost you your life. You make them come up whether they want to come up or not. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Excuse me, I just had to get that off my chest. No, I'm telling you, that enemy wants to get somebody like me, apostle of nations, and, and take him and, and, and somebody like Brother Cope, whoever it is, he won't get, get, get them sentimental and get them what? No, you can't, fo- can't afford it. No, that's what Mary did with Jesus. Oh, well, uh, Jesus, uh, 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 you know, if you had been here earlier, he wouldn't have died. Jesus said, oh, he'll rise again. He said, well, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection of the last day. He said, I am. I'm the last day. And I've come from that day to this day to show you how to live. He got in front of that tomb. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Boy, they, that, that disciples step back. They, they put the Lord, he didn't put his ministry on the line. And, 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 and uh, he, Lazarus, when he said, roll away the stone, that's when they stepped back. And then he called him out and Lazarus came out of the tomb wrapped in grave cold clothes. Yeah, you follow what I'm saying? Now, uh, I don't know what y'all are thinking, but he wasn't walking because his feet were wrapped. So he had to be supernaturally moving. Come on now, come on, man. They said, you can't do anything for him now because he's stinking. Jesus said, what? What does a stink have to do with it? See, that, that's the devil trying to front you off. Well, he's stinking now. Well, I, I don't care. It doesn't make any difference. You know, I'm talking about these faith-filled words. Yes. You don't, don't let them go. Amen. Don't let them go. Don't bow down to Satan one bit. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Over in... Uh, <clears throat> um, uh, over, I think it's book of Matthew. This is where uh, in Matthew 22, um, if I'm right, uh, um, it's where uh, Jesus, uh, Peter, uh, Luke. yeah, Luke chapter 22. Um, what happened was um, Satan, Jesus told Peter, Satan has asked for you. My Lord. Well, you know you're going somewhere when Satan asks for you. (laughs) That he may sift you as wheat. You know you can't sift wheat. You sift flour, what wheat is ground to. Flour can be sifted. Wheat means you smell in yourself. It means that you think you got something you don't have yet. And Satan has asked for you. He knows you don't quite have it yet. (laughs) That he wants to sift you as wheat. But Jesus said, I prayed for you that your faith won't fail. Watch this. He didn't say if you're converted. He said when you're converted, strengthen your brother because Jesus knows his prayer will work every time. Say amen to that. Amen. Woo. Oh, Lord. Uh, he's calling it in. Yes, sir. I said he's calling it in. Yes, You've got these words here, and these words here have really, uh, uh, they're going to really take the body of Christ into this last, uh, this last time. It really is. All right, let me see where I am now. Okay, so uh, putting power in your words, faith uh, filled power in your words. So 
uh, the first thing um, I said first is confess. You got to confess. So don't say anything that's not uh, not true or that you don't want. Uh, then you have to commit. Uh, commit to live only by what you say. And then the third one is you got to create that expect what you say to be to come to, uh, to be brought to pass supernaturally. All right. This fly is back again. Y'all say something to this fly. Say something. All right. Then we've got to come on down. And uh, this is talking about um, the what? Word processor. Uh, the word processor. All right. Now, this is the way the word works. Now, I can only tell you this uh, by, by my, I can tell you more than one way, but I, I want you to explain to this by what I did with words. Now, you are a know-it-all. That's the first thing. God's made you that way. You know everything. It's not because you went to school. It's because you got the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, you are a know-it-all. Now, I went I went to, to visit a chairman of a large company at the request of him through one of our members. They said, can you come? He wants to see you. I said, what about? He said, I'm not sure, but he wants to see you. I said, okay. So he went, I went to see him. So he said, a little small talk. And he said, Reverend, I want to know what to do for black male youth in Chicago. I said, okay. I said, I don't know what to do now, but give me seven days, I'll tell you exactly what to do. Now, how did I know that? Because Psalm chapter 1828 says that the Lord, God will enlighten my darkness. He promised me that. He's going to enlighten my darkness. So, I can go to bed with that in mind and put that problem in my spirit for God to deliver me an answer. Yes, sir. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm, yes, sir. I'm, I'm telling you now how the system works, God's system. And so when I did that and put it in my spirit, then I sleep and rise how long? day and night. And while I'm sleeping, my spirit is searching the avenues of God. Put up that 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Ready? Read. Let's put another scripture up there. This is Proverbs 20 and 28, uh, 7, pardon me. Proverbs 20 and 27. We're going to read this one and see how all this applies. Okay? Ready? Read. So my spirit goes on a search at night while I'm asleep and it's searching the avenues of God for the answer that I'm going to need to answer this man's question. Y'all with me? And so what happens is I get that answer. I wake up in the morning and the Holy Spirit brings that answer up. In seven days, I went out there and gave him a presentation. He said, wow. He said, I got $40,000 in the chairman's fund now. Can you take that? Look at wisdom coming with money. Yeah. Right. See y'all? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So I said last night, this is the place we're going. And it's the centurion said, you don't need to come to my house, but what? Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. So that's what he did. Then I gave you the clothes where I said that in that clothes, uh, God wants you to be like Jesus. Jesus said, uh, the things that I do shall you do too. And I told you things that, uh, that men think are impossible are possible with God. All right. Let's look at vengeance. This is a topic that the U.S. church needs to learn about. They know about it in Africa because Africa has a lot of witchcraft and so forth. There is, Lord have mercy. Can I go? Can I start this? We got a shopping mall. Put it up there. That's the first one. All right. I couldn't have gotten that without vengeance. There are places you can't go unless you know about the vengeance of the Lord. I'm going to say it boldly. You can try to deny it if you want to or or find a place where you can't. I think for us in these last days to finish our assignment, we're going to have to know about vengeance. Vengeance is heaven's justice system. It's heaven's justice system. I had to call on heaven to do this. Their justice system. It's a necessity of punishing offenders proceeding from a heart of justice. God is a God of justice. Psalm 103 verse 103 verse 6. Look at it. Put it up there, please. 103 verse 6. Look what it says. Ready? Read. Look at that. Justice. Look at God, who he says he is. Let's look at Psalm chapter 75 and verse 6 and 7. God is saying who he is. Ready? Read. Stop. He's a judge. When you can't get the Supreme Court, yes, sir. To do right, you go to the high court of heaven. Folks, there's some unjust laws being made. And they are being made, I guarantee you, to the world's advantage. Because Satan is behind them. That's why he wants to pack the court. Because things are not going his way. And I'm saying to you now, vengeance. You don't need to pack the court. The vengeance of the Lord. Now watch this. So when I'm going to get to the shopping mall, they, uh, first of all, every avenue to get that 
$1.5 million additional that I needed shut down. One bank strung me out until right at closing and then told me, I can't give you the money. No real reason. I've got pristine credit. That means good. I got real good credit. You name it. Church full of integrity. They couldn't give it to me. Now, the seller said and his lawyer said, a reverend, <clears throat> we going to stretch this out a little longer. But if you don't have the money by X date, we're going to sell it to somebody else. I said, oh Lord, what am I going to do now? He said, what you're going to do, <clears throat> he says, is listen to me. I said, all right. He said, if the money's not here by Monday, go to the bank. Now, I know if you go to a new bank, it's going to take a while for them to really qualify you for that loan. That's 2.5 million. But what did I do? I played sleep until Monday. <laughs> and then Monday came. And God spoke to me, go to this bank. Now, he couldn't tell me before because the devil would have shut the man down. You hear what I'm saying? But he told me then, when he told me, I called the banker. The president said, yes, I heard something. And, and he said, can you get me certain papers by six o'clock? Not I did. He said, call me back at 11 o'clock next day. He said, Reverend, you got your money. I said, well, praise the Lord. Now understand, I'm obeying God. Now, the next thing is, I bought it, or we bought it, and I couldn't go in it. Because now, the village just made a law. Not 10 years ago, just made a law. Made it for me. That you can't go in there and have that church. I said, no, no, God. I said, Lord, what do I do now? <clears throat> he said, you take this and go up and read Romans 13, 1 through 4 to the mayor. I did it, not knowing what I was going to get. The mayor began to tremble. Y'all better hear that word. In Genesis 20 and verse 3, God came to Abimelech at night in a dream and said, you are but a dead man. Now, a lot of saints don't like this kind of preaching because they don't think it's still a God of love. But he is a God of love. Yes. But he's also a God of justice. That's right. That's right. Say amen. amen. This earth God has given to the children of men. He has given this earth to you and he wants you to run it. So I'm telling you that when the justice system of the earth fails, the justice system of heaven will prevail. Yes, sir. Now you've got to know how to go to God for his justice. And you've got to believe that, uh, that uh, his system, you've got to have confidence in his system rather than confidence in the world system that you're coming through. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes. Now, I'm saying this. Now, a lot of places, I'm going to preach this. I'm going to continue here tomorrow. But I want to show you something because I'm, I'm about to open your eyes. It took vengeance 
to get Jesus in the world. Look at Matthew chapter 2 and verse 19. Now, let me, before you put it up there, let me give you a little, little, little background. Wise men came in town. Now, it wasn't three wise men. That's on the greeting card. It was a bunch of them. But they had donkeys staggering with gold. Now, they came and they told Herod about it, and he, he wanted to know, he said, what are y'all looking for? He said, there's a king born here. Herod said, wait a minute, I'm the king. They said, now he's a king. And Herod wants to know, wait a minute, what's going on? And so uh, he gave him permission to come in his jurisdiction. They came on in and they ended up at Jesus' house. Now, at that time, he was about two years old. He wasn't born in a house. He was born in a what? Manger. So this is when he was about two years old. Well, they had gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Millions of dollars of gold. Now, get the picture, because the greeting card has got a little box that you open up. <laughs> and so God told them after that to leave a different way. Yes, sir. So they left a different way. Now, here's a scripture for you. First Samuel chapter two and verse six. First Samuel chapter two and verse six. I'm going to go on with my story, but I want you to read this scripture. Ready? Read. Stop. So we go back here and then Herod heard about the wise men going out of his city another way and he got really mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he sent his people out to kill all the Jewish male babies two years old, come on, help me, and under. You got it? Now, if you haven't read your Bible, you need to read it. And so once that happened, he killed them all. But God had warned Joseph and Mary to take the baby down to where? Egypt. Egypt, among the world. And then when the coast was clear, he's going to bring them back. Yes, but look how God cleared the coast. Matthew <laughs> chapter 2 and then verse, uh, you got you to gotta get this. Yes, sir. This is not for saints, uh, who are not uh, perfect, <laughs> mature, or trying to be mature, or trying to grow in faith. It's not for them. It's for people who want their money back. Okay? <laughs> All right? Look at Matthew 2 and look at 19. I'm going to have you read it. Ready? Read. Now, what did it call the baby? They called him something. Uh, it referred to the baby as a young what? Child. Come on, y'all. Is that in there? Yes, sir. Say young child. Young child. When they came to the house, he was a young child. But when Herod was dead and all the people that helped Herod were dead. Yes, sir. 
Y'all stay with me now. This is good news. Do you hear? Yes, sir. So everybody that killed those babies died within months. Do you hear me? This is called the vengeance of the Lord. Now, this is not your decision. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 30 tells you it's not your decision. Ready, read. Ready, read. I'm telling you, vengeance belongs to the Lord and he's going to get your stuff back. When Herod and all of them that were with Herod, that killing them Jews, them babies, he said he wiped them out and then told Joseph and Mary, you can come on back up here now. That man is dead. Look at man coming running around. I'm, you hear what I'm saying? I'm saying when they mess with you, yes, they're going to mess with the wrong person. Yes, now look at Ezekiel chapter 33. What is it? Uh, chapter, uh, 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 turn from the wickedness and live. Uh, David, uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter, glory to God, Ezekiel chapter t- 22, uh, 33 and 11. Ezekiel chapter 33 and 11. Ready? Read. Come on. Ezekiel chapter 33. And, wait, 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 wait. You're going to read this thing together. See, because I'm going to have you get this. Satan is through stealing from you. All kinds of stuff happened. We got to learn this principle. Ready? Read. God is still a loving God and he's got no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but the wicked turn from his wicked ways. And I'm telling you, when the vengeance of the Lord is there, that wickedness, he will put a halt to it. When Pharaoh was chasing Israel, when they were coming out of Egypt as slaves, hey, Pharaoh said, you let my people, God said, you let my people go. He spoke to Moses. And, and Pharaoh let him go, but he made one mistake. He went after them. See, he had no pleasure in the death of Pharaoh, but he got to turn from his ways. Yes, sir. Now, I'm telling you some Pharaohs out here that's got your stuff, and they're trying to hold on to it, trying to keep it. Praise God. I'm going back to the room. I'll see y'all tomorrow.